Diary of a Married Blind Woman, Bringing Home Baby. Hey everybody, Jen here. So here's some information on bringing baby home. This is for the mothers-to-be. So for those who are curious about blindness, if you have the right resources and you have experience with children, Bringing home baby is not all that different because you're going to be exhausted. You might have emotions running all over the place. It's it's not all that different. It's just a matter of being confident in you and having the right resources to ask questions if you're not sure about something. Nobody's perfect, blind or sighted, when it comes to bringing baby home. So let's start with the delivery of Mason. 19 hours, not counting the first visit to the hospital and on and off contracting. I contracted for a couple of days, several days. Um, actually, if you really want to get nitty gritty, I had Braxton Hicks, which is false labor, throughout a lot of my pregnancy, but it wasn't consistent. It would be like maybe a couple here and there, and then it would stop. So it was nothing to worry about. It was just something that would happen uh, sometimes. But we went to the hospital once, a couple days before he was due, and I was three centimeters, but the contractions were not consistent enough, and I was not progressing at all. So I got sent home, which I was very sad about. Then on his due date, I went to my 40-week appointment, and they're checking everything, and um, my doctor said that the fluid around Mason didn't look like it was very high so she said I'm gonna send you in to be induced and so we went to the hospital again and they look at the fluid and they're like oh it's fine it looks perfect and sometimes the doctor's ultrasound machines aren't the greatest and yeah 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 so I said look I am 40 weeks today and I'm done I had a great pregnancy, guys. It was it was textbook, but I was uncomfortable. He was sitting very low, and I was done. So they said, "Well, if you if you want to do this today, we can still do it, but you have to be aware that there are risks." And I said, "Well, he'll be fine. I just wanted to get this done. I'm done." So then they checked how dilated I was there, and I was five centimeters. So I said, oh, well, you're already in labor, so you're not going anywhere with or without Pitocin. Now, for those first-time mommies out there, Pitocin intensifies the contractions in the sense that they're going to get stronger eventually, but they get stronger a lot more quickly if you use Pitocin for being induced. And... Most insurance companies these days will not induce you unless there's a reason to do so, but I pushed because I was done, and they could tell I was done. So, um, 19 hours later, the next day, Mason was born, and the pushing didn't take crazy long. I had to get it down because the lady was telling me how to do it. She kept saying, breathe in breathe out, breathe in, hold, and push. And I, I heard all those words, but my body just wasn't doing it. I don't know why. I was probably just exhausted. But I was hearing her. It just, it just wasn't computing to the point where I was doing it. So I got a little bit pissy at that at that moment. But um, I did get an epidural, which I wasn't going to, but I often wonder how things would have been if I had not had Pitocin, but... I'm still glad I got the epidural in the, in the long run because I was able to relax and even rest a little bit in the middle of the night. Of course, they kept waking me up to change my position that I was lay in which I was laying, um, but that's neither here nor there. So, after Mason was born, um, we worked on nursing, which wasn't easy for a while. I will tell you that not every baby gets it right away. You may understand how to do it, but the baby doesn't always get it. So, they might have you use what is called a nipple shield. The nipple shield is a plastic nipple that fits over your nipple, and it helps them latch on a little more easily. 
Now, if you use this, I'm telling you from experience, try not to use it for too long because what they don't tell you is prolonged use will cut your milk production down. So I didn't know that. I just thought, okay, this will help him eat because I was concerned. I said, he needs to eat something, he, you know? He, we tried donor milk in the hospital and he drank it, but his body did not like it because it wasn't mine. He threw it back up. So it took him a little while to get nursing without the nipple shield. It was a big thanks to my sister. My sister helped me out a lot with that because she's very good at nursing. And so I think had I been able to work more with her in the hospital, he would have been just fine. But it was just one of those things. So blind or not, nursing is not always easy. And I actually, I had a rough time at one point. We brought him in to the doctor and he wasn't losing weight anymore. They lose weight when they're first born a little bit. That's pretty normal. But he was also not gaining. So he was maintaining the same weight for a while. He was pretty skinny. He was long and skinny. So I felt like I was starving my kid. And um, so they said, you either need to get rid of the shield or you're going to have to do formula with every feeding. So I was like, I got to get rid of the shield. I mean, we did formula for a while. And uh, once I got rid of the shield, I cut it down to every other feeding. I would add formula. Um, but I would not have, I don't know if I would have been able to get rid of the shield if it wasn't for my sister working with me on it. Um, so if you need help with something, whether you can see or not, that's one of the times to ask because your baby depends on it. It's not just you trying to learn something or cook something. It's you taking care of your little one. And I needed help because I did not, I wanted to be able to nurse him and have him be full and have him get all the good things that come out of nursing. Nursing's not for everybody. If it's not for you, that's okay. But if you want to do it, you can do it. And as long as you're persistent, um, pumping milk helps as well. They had me do that some. I will say from personal experience, eating is very important. Well, eating is important anyway. That sounds really silly, but if you are nursing, especially you got to, you got to have snacks. I didn't always eat when I should have. And one morning I nursed Mason, he fell asleep. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take a shower and then I'm going to eat breakfast when I get out of the shower. I should have eaten breakfast first because I passed out in the shower and had to go back to the hospital and they had to hydrate me because I apparently looked like crap and they said, do you need to eat? I said, and they said, why aren't you eating? Everybody, my whole family wouldn't let me live it down. They were like, why aren't you eating? I said, I'm, I'm just, I'm too tired. All I want to do is sleep. I wasn't thinking about food. I was thinking about going to sleep while he was sleeping. But I, yeah, after that, whew, I made sure to eat. Eat, eat, eat. Even if it's just little snacks all day, you gotta have stuff in your system because they take everything from you when they nurse. And on top of them eating every two hours and then if you're if the doctor says you should pump, yeah. And at the time I was pumping a couple, to, couple of times a day. Um, so that was a lot being removed from me. But I was so, like I said, adamant about when he sleeps, I should sleep. I didn't always eat. So yeah, eat, please eat. That's for everybody. Um, and know that if you're feeling sad, you should really, really, really talk to somebody, whether it's a family member, a sibling, a friend, a therapist, a doctor. And when you go to your six week post appointment, they will ask you questions. And if your number is too high, they're going to suggest that you talk to someone anyway. So I have my sisters and I have my mom and I have friends. So I had plenty of people to talk to. Um, so, and I did, I 
I opened up about a lot of things that I was sad about. I was sad because I didn't feel like I was a good mom. I was sad because I kept hearing the devil in my head. The devil in my head was getting to me, saying he'd be better off elsewhere. I knew I could take care of him, and I knew I, it would be okay, but I had, I did have times where I was very sad, and I let stuff in my head get to me, big time. I was afraid to take him out in public because I was afraid that somebody would, you know, call somebody else, and then I'd have somebody at my door asking, are you sure you can take care of this baby? And I was terrified. I was terrified at the hospital. And that gut feeling doesn't completely go away when you take your baby out, at least not for me, but it lessens as you become more confident. It, it decreases. You're not thinking constantly, oh, is somebody going to see me with the baby? Is somebody going to call CPS or call somebody, you know, it's, it's, it's a terrible feeling. And it's less now because I feel more confident now. I am, I am nowhere near perfect, but I feel more comfortable taking him out in public with the right techniques. So mommy's to be, whether you can see or not, bear all this in mind. I'm not trying to ruin the beginning experience for you because there's nothing like holding your baby. You know, knowing that it's your baby and the waiting, the the doctor's appointments, the ultrasounds, and it's finally done. The baby's finally here. You're going to be tired. And I don't know what your emotions will be like because everyone's different. But you're going to be tired and there may be moments where it's, it's not easy. But it's worth it to watch them grow, to watch them learn to watch them get nursing, to watch them, to hear them coo, to hear them laugh, to watch them learn to crawl, to watch them learn to walk, and so on and so on and so on. It's the best, hardest job, but it's so worth it because that's your baby. And when they, when they do things right and they're, you're not only proud of them, but they're proud of themselves. It's, it's a beautiful thing, so be aware that it won't always be easy, but it's worth it. It is so worth it. Another serious video, folks. Um, there is more to come. I'm working on a couple of different projects to post, but I wanted to get something because um, it's been over a week, and I, I try to do something every week. But I appreciate everybody, again, who has watched, subscribed, who has shared, commented thank you so much for your support because i'm i'm really hoping to build this big even if i'm if it, even if i don't make money off of it which i you know i don't plan to make money off of it but i i want to build this big i want to really stress that blind parents with the right training and the right resources and the right level of confidence we do the same stuff we just have to do certain things a little differently so thank you again for watching, take care, and God bless. Don't forget to subscribe to Diary of a Married Blind Woman. For past videos and blog posts, please visit diaryofamarriedblindwoman.wordpress.com. You can also request to join the group Diary of a Married Blind Woman on Facebook.